excited that you joined this service today. Welcome to church and welcome again to a wonderful new day. Last week, we started a journey of gratitude together and we'll continue to explore the joy of being thankful for the wonderful blessings all around us. This year is gradually coming to an end and we are counting down to Christmas. So let's give Jesus a shout of praise. Whoa! Thank you, Jesus. If it's your first time here, we are delighted to have you as part of our growing family. Welcome, everybody. Let's all stand in a circle. Hello, everyone. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everyone. How are you? How are you today? If it's your birthday this week, please stand and shout. Let's sing you the birthday song. you a very happy birthday and the best year ever let us pray heads bowed and eyes closed heavenly father we thank you for another beautiful day that you have made we are grateful for life and for another opportunity to learn something new today we also pray for our friends who are celebrating their birthday this week dear lord bless them keep them and make it all well with them. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.
week, we had loads of fun learning about how we share our appreciation for our friends through our words or actions. True friendship isn't about what you can get from your friends, it's about looking out for each other. Now, we should thank God every day for giving us special friends who treat us like David or Jonathan, because good friends are wonderful gifts from God. Make sure to tell your friends that you appreciate them. Say it to them, write it in a note, or give a special card or a gift. I love gifts. To show how much you care and value their friendship. You should always be a good friend in return. Show loyalty, love, and kindness, just like your friend has shown to you. It's essential to appreciate your friends by being there for them and treating them as well as they've treated you. Our verse of the month is from 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18. It says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This verse says that it's God's will for everyone who believes in Jesus to be thankful. Some things happen in our lives that are easy to be truly thankful and excited for. For example, we're thankful for our birthdays, for weddings, for love and family. But sometimes some really difficult things happen. There might be an illness, the death of a loved one, or some other sad event. How can we be expected to be grateful in those things? Now let's look closely at our verse. Some might think that this verse says to be thankful for all circumstances, but the verse says to be thankful in all circumstances. Now the original Hebrew word for in that is used here means in the middle of or during. In other words, no matter what is happening in your life, you can be thankful. The Bible gives us a list of things we can always be thankful for, no matter what happens in our lives. This means that there will always be something to be thankful for. We can be thankful because God is good. We see this in 1 Chronicles 16 and verse 34. Because God's love is forever. Psalm 106 verse 1 tells us that. 1 Corinthians 1 and 11 tells us that God's grace is amazing. God does wonderful things. We see that in Psalm 107 and verse 8. God listens to our prayers. This is what Psalm 118 and verse 21 tells us. God gives us perfect laws. We see that in Psalm 119 and verse 62. In Daniel 2 verses 22 and 23, we see that God gives us wisdom and shows us the truth. In Philippians 1 and verse 3, we see that we have friends who believe in God. Most importantly, we should be thankful because God gave his son Jesus to save us from the punishment of our sins and to give us new life. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 57 tells us that God has saved all who believe in Jesus. He has taken our sins and given us his righteousness. fun your family likes to do as a group. Do you know that each member of your family makes your family special? Yes, that includes you. Your mom's kindness, your dad's wisdom, your siblings' friendship and laughter. Your family is like a beautiful garden. Each one of you is like a unique flower and together you create a garden full of love and happiness. You may all be different, but that's what makes you all special. Families are a gift from God. 
God gave you just the parents and siblings you need for all the tests and trials that will come your way, likewise theirs. Families are special. Make sure your family knows you love them and are thankful that you have them. Last week, we started our series on saying thank you and having an attitude of gratitude. Um, with someone we can all agree we're thankful for, a friend. If you have good friends who are always there, like David and Jonathan in the Bible, you've got a special person who deserves all the thanks you can give them. Even if you don't have close friends in your life, yet there are still people in your life you can count on just as much. Before you were ever born, some of those people were chosen for you by God himself. I'm talking about the people you live with, eat with, work with, play with, and yes, probably fight with every day. Your family. Friends become special people by choice. We choose who we hang out with based on the things we share in common. For most people, however, your family isn't your choice. It was chosen for you by God, who knew you before you were ever born. And God knows what he's doing when he gives you the parents and siblings you have. That's hard to believe sometimes when you fight with your siblings oh, or have a disagreement with your parents. But in the end, you need to remember that your family is a gift from God. Moms and dads are there to care for you, provide for your needs, and to teach you to follow Christ. That's very important. Your brothers and sisters are also trying to grow up to become the person God wants them to be just like you. Today's scripture is about Joseph. <laughs> A guy who had every reason to turn his back on his family. What's more, he had the perfect chance to get revenge for something horrible that they had done to him, selling him into slavery. Instead, Joseph remembered that God gave him his family and he used his power to save them. Today's Bible reading is about Joseph. His story starts in Genesis chapter 37 and goes all the way to chapter 45. Joseph was one of 12 brothers. His father loved him and gave him a coat of many colors. His brothers were often angry at him because he had some <laughs> amazing dreams. And he also will tell their dad when they didn't do the right thing. One day, they tore his coat and sold him as a slave. He was a slave for many years and even went to prison, but God took care of him. Joseph eventually became the prime minister of a country called Egypt. Yes, Pharaoh the king appointed him as prime minister. There was a severe famine in all the land, which made his brothers travel all the way to Egypt to buy food for their families. Even though Joseph's brothers didn't recognize him, he knew who they were. But listen to what he said when he revealed himself to them. Okay, friends, before we go any further, bring out your Bible. It's time for our Bible reading. And we will be reading from Genesis 45 and verses 3 to 8. said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers weren't able to answer. They were too afraid of him. Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. So they did. Then he said, I am your brother Joseph. I'm the one you sold into Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. God sent me ahead of you to save many lives. 
For two years now, there hasn't been enough food in the land. And for the next five years, people won't be plowing or gathering crops. But God sent me ahead of you to keep some of you alive on earth. He sent me here to save your lives by an act of mighty power. So then, it wasn't you who sent me here, it was God. If anyone in the Bible had a reason to turn his back on family for good, it was Joseph. His brothers had sold him into slavery when he was still a young boy and he was put in prison. But God was looking out for Joseph and when the time was right, he rose to become the prime minister, which was the second most powerful man in all of Egypt. He saved the nation from a terrible famine. I don't know how many people today will be as forgiving as Joseph was. After all, his brothers were the reason he was separated from his father and the home he knew as a boy. But Joseph put his hurts behind him. He decided to forgive them instead of beating them up, making them slaves, or even throwing them all in jail for a very long time. He convinced Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to let them all come in and live in Egypt so that they wouldn't die of starvation. Today's story is a great reminder that even when our family hurts us, we can forgive them and be kind. He saved his brothers because they were family, fulfilling God's plan for his life and giving all of them a reason to be thankful for family. As you grow older and move on in life, you're going to discover that friendships can come and go. People change, people move away, and when they do, they find new friends to replace the old. The one thing that will never change is family. You will never have another father and mother. You may add more siblings by birth, adoption, or marriage, but you will never stop being siblings with the ones you have. These are special people with whom you have and will share a lot of memories. They are people we can be thankful for. I want to challenge you to look for ways to be thankful for your family this week. You can start by stepping back and looking at all the little things mom and dad do every day. Waking you up, making breakfast, packing lunch, getting you to school, not to mention working hard, I mean very hard, to provide all your needs. Write your parents a note, or better yet, just tell them that you love them and are thankful for all that they do. This might be a little trickier with your brothers and sisters, but if you do have any brothers or sisters, find something about them to be thankful for this week. What have your older siblings done to teach you new things? What great talents have you seen in your younger siblings? How have your brothers and sisters looked out for you? Again, you can let them know you are thankful by writing a note or just telling them out loud that you appreciate them. Family is a gift from God. Our family is ours for life. And while we may not always get along, <laughs> your family will always be there. Thank God for your families and let everyone in that family know how much you are thankful you have them. This week, we have learned that your family isn't something you choose. It was chosen for you by God, who knew you before you were even born. You should remember that your family is a gift from God. Joseph put his hurts behind him. He saved his brothers because they were family. Fulfilling God's ultimate plan for his life and giving all of them a reason to be thankful for family. Your family is a special set of people with whom you have and will share a lot of memories. They are people you can definitely be thankful for. We all need to thank our parents for all that they do and let our siblings know we are thankful for them as well by writing a note 
or just telling them out loud that we appreciate them. So every week we have a challenge. The challenge this week is create a family tree using paper and craft materials. You can draw pictures or write the names of your family members on the branches. Perform a random act of kindness for each member of your family. This could be assistance with the preparation of breakfast, helping with chores, or leaving a sweet note. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the gift of parents and siblings. Forgive us for the times we have taken our families for granted. Help us to show our families how much we love them. In Jesus' name, amen. Some people have written us to say that these teachings bless them and would like to give an offering to God. The different ways by which you can give are now displayed. Please note that this is optional. God bless you. out our pop quiz today. Ready, set, go! Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. True or false? The answer is true. Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. Our families are dashed from God to us. A. Gifts B. Punishment C. Curses D. Donation The answer is A. Gifts Your family was chosen for you by Dash A. Yourself B. An angel C your grandfather d god the answer is d your family was chosen for you by god which of the following is a way to be thankful for our families a by complaining about them b by calling them names c by telling and showing them that we love them. D, by disobeying our parents. The answer is C. We can be thankful for our families by telling and showing them that we love them. Joseph became the second in command of Egypt. True or false? The answer is true. Joseph became the second in command of Egypt. Joseph threw all his brothers in jail to punish them for making him a slave. True or false? The answer is false. Joseph forgave his brothers and saved them because they were his family and he loved them. We should be thankful for our family dash. A, every day. B, once a month. C, once a week. D, once a year. The answer is A, 
we should be thankful for our family every day. You should always be dash for your family. A. Grumpy. B. Angry. C. Thankful. D. Unhappy. The answer is C. You should always be thankful for your family. God wants us to be thankful for our families. True or false? The answer is true. God wants us to be thankful for our families. What is the one thing you are thankful to God for about your family? Please shout your answer as loud as you can. Remember that you can watch all these teachings over and over again. Till I see you next time with another amazing story. Remember to be thankful every day in the good times and even in the bad because there is always something to be thankful for. I love you and God loves you more. Bye!